What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast, episode 130. My name is Brett, a.k.a. Enigma9011, and you can catch this podcast live over on twitch.tv slash Enigma9011 every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And you join the chat if you're a subscriber over there. We'd love to have you. But if you can't catch it live, that's A-OK. It drops over on YouTube. Uh, topic by topic, and is put as one big video and MP3 for your amusement on the following Friday on those podcast services. Last but not least, hashtag ad merch store. Get all of your swag over there, t-shirts, cups, backpacks, and more. Rep the brand. Support us. We'd love you for it. Today, we're flying solo once again, so will it be a super short one like last week? Maybe. We'll see. Who knows? Um, but today, I want to talk about a new game that I just started playing Thursday, this past Thursday as of recording. And I want to talk about a game called Nobody Saves the World. What a title. What a title. Just dropped this past Thursday on the PlayStation side of things, and I believe also on Nintendo Switch. So now it is on PlayStation platforms, the Switch, Xbox platforms, and on Steam. So you can check it out anywhere. And it was recommended to me by the 6 1 Indie crew. Shout out to Mike and Kyle. And they had nothing but praise for this game. A lot of fun, entertaining, and boy, were they right. Stream was a good time with it, and I've been playing, I think I played about four hours on stream, potentially five, and at this point of recording, I'm at 13 hours (laughs) that I've played this game. Um, And it's been a blast. It's one of those games where the developers, Drinkbox Studios, it's a very quirky story like how they're (laughs) presenting it very unique in characters and that uniqueness and strangeness strangeness makes it appealing but the story they also have behind it is interesting it's intriguing the main gameplay or concept is it's like a dungeon crawler essentially not like a hades where it's point a to point b random generated blah 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 it's more of like here's your map And you have a dungeon over here at this level, a dungeon over here at this level, dungeon over here at this level. And you'll get different quests, either clear the dungeons or go there and help a certain character with this task. You go that, you go to that place, and then you just have to make your way through. There's all these different monsters and villains. You go room to room, level to level, and essentially try and defeat everybody there. And I think you know, the story they're trying to build and the gameplay works so well together that it just flows. It's really good. It doesn't feel like something that is a chore and it doesn't feel like something that's a heavy task. It's weird, but it's almost like you can turn your brain off (laughs) and play this game. You know, it's not something that's going to make you scratch your head or hate yourself, Elden Ring, (laughs) or anything like that. It's just simply fun. And Along with the strange characters, your main character, nobody, has a unique ability to them. And it's the fact that they can change their form or their appearance. And in changing their form and appearance, it gives your character new abilities. So, for example, as nobody, he can't do too much. He can run around, he can slap people, it looks like a palm strike. But that's about it. As you learn these new forms, there's a lot of them. Some make sense as like a dungeon crawler, like a guard or a ranger, where you have a sword or you have a bow. But then there's other classes that are just, once again, ridiculous and obscure. You could be a rat. You can be a slug. You could be a horse. You could be a zombie. You could be a ghost. And it's like, what? what's a rat gonna do in this situation but with the different characters that they allow you to be once you you know get enough progression in the game the different characters are a lot of fun to play with for example the rat very very fast he just you know chomps at the enemies but if you increase his level enough he can have poison attached to his attacks And if people are poisoned, you can detonate them to do explosive damage to other enemies. 
If you're a zombie, your health constantly goes down. But as you attack people, your health goes up because you're technically eating them. And you can convert other enemies to zombies to help you out. Or you're a horse which just gallops around, but you got to kick everything. <laughs> it's just, it's so weird that it just, it, it's so entertaining. It's entertaining to go around and try out all these different forms and play through the dungeons as them. Now, another thing that I think helps with trying out these different characters and makes it appealing, I mentioned the quests of like going out to dungeons, clear this dungeon, help this person here with this task. You have those main quests, but then you also have side quests and progression quests for the different forms. So depending on their abilities, maybe use a certain ability so many times or use it against an enemy or hit so many at the same time. And it gives you like these mini goals to chase after to make your character stronger, to improve, you know, your experience with the game. It accomplishes that. And it makes it appealing. It's that trail of breadcrumbs <laughs> to keep you invested and keep you going. Obviously, once again, you have the big story, those bigger goals, but then you have these smaller things that you want to chase after and achieve. And all in all, it works together great. So right now, those forms that I talked about, I have... 12 unlocked of the 17 or so forms so i still have a little bit of work to do in unlocking them but so far i have no complaints for the forms that i've unlocked i don't feel like any of them are like super boring there's definitely ones i prefer i think um my favorites so far um the rat is surprisingly very humorous i think that's maybe just me thinking the art is adorable of how he like dabs and stuff as you pick them um, the guard has been a very reliable one, obviously s swinging a sword around and stomping in a big area of effect attack. It's always reliable, especially when you come to a, a harder challenge um, that you might need to face in order to progress the main story. So he's been a good one. And then a surprise one I didn't think I was going to like, but is the magician class. So the magician has... An attack where essentially he attacks with the full like a deck of cards so he'll like flourish them out in front of him and it will attack the enemies in the way that are hit by the cards so he has that ability and it's very very effective but then also he can summon like companions I don't remember the exact terminology they use for it but you summon these companions and they fight with you similar to the zombie where you can convert another enemy into a zombie but this one you just spawn it out of thin air so it's a magician what a magician summon all the time you can pull a rabbit out of your hat and the rabbit can go around and chomp people and then randomly you can summon also a tiger so like a white tiger will just be running around and it has more health and does more damage but it can occur like it occurs less often than the rabbit does um, and it's just it's fun to just run around with these companions going on. I think there's more abilities for the magician. I haven't leveled them up fully. But that's been a fun surprise to dive into and just see the abilities there. Now, as you progress, excuse me. As you progress, another thing that makes it really cool is I mentioned these abilities that you know certain roles have, like the for example, the rat with the poison ability and then being able to detonate things that are poisoned. As you progress, eventually you'll unlock the ability to customize your forms. And what that means is you can take another ability, just one, from another class and like put it into this one. So for example, I like the poison from the rat, I can put that poison with my magician and now I have that ability in there. So I can chomp at him, poison an enemy, and we're good to go. I'm doing more status damage. And then there's the passive abilities too. You can unlock more passive slots as you level up totally your general level. And those are just like status buffs. Maybe things do more damage over time, whether it's poison or your stun effects or your movement won't be affected even if you're weakened and things like that. Just something to benefit your gameplay. But with the customization, you can customize each and every class 
individually. It's not like a, a catch one or catch all. Yeah. So everything feels unique and its play style is different. And it's been a blast. It's been a blast to dive into um, with my playthrough so far of that 13 hours or so. The story for starting off so goofy is getting really intriguing. So your main quest as you start the game is you're nobody <laughs> and you stumble upon this magic wand. And the magic wand is what allows you to change the into these different forms. Well, the wand's not yours, so you are trying to return this wand or at least find out where this wizard has disappeared to. You need to find him because this grand wizard can kind of save the town and save the world that's being attacked by this calamity. The Calamity is this big evil that is summoning all these monsters, taking over towns, causing the chaos. So your role is to find the hero, for then the hero to save the world. And as you progress, you'll meet different characters. You'll meet his apprentice, who's kind of an asshole. You'll meet um, some scientists who try and help disrupt the Calamity, slow it down, see what they can do to save the day. And... As you're going along, you'll kind of obviously get more and more information about where this wizard, I think his name is Nostromagus, is located. And the twists and turns that this twists and turns that this story in this game takes is really intriguing. And I'm excited to learn more and more. There seems to be some kind of relationship between your character and the evil the calamity that is kind of going on. So figuring out that information, along with obviously discovering where Nostromagus is, it's cool. It's cool. Um, I think another thing, too, that is fun with this game is the world discovery. So it's a big open map, and for the most part, you can just openly explore it. Maybe not fully, because certain parts will be cut off to you if it's like a too much of a higher level section. But figuring out the puzzles of like, okay, here's a locked door. How do I discover the opposite end of this locked door to essentially make like a shortcut for yourself? And you're navigating through the big world, you know, defeating monsters outside, obviously. Maybe picking up some side quests to help other citizens and get some experience for yourself. Um, but figuring out those puzzles are satisfying. And like I said, for the most part, those harder areas will be locked off to you unless you somehow find a way to navigate your way through and if you navigate your way through you're going to learn fast if an area is overpowered for you those enemies are going to mess you up um but yeah it's it's been a good time it's been a good time with this game um obviously i know a lot of people have already played this whether it was on xbox or pc but being new to it with the playstation scope um, it's just been a blast. It's been a really fun experience. Um, Drinkbox has hit it out of the park again. They have made uh, was it Guacamelee and Guacamelee 2, which are a lot of fun. I don't know if I've played any of their other titles, but great indie title. Um, if you guys are looking for something to play, it doesn't feel like it's super long of a game. Um, obviously, I've played 13, but I'm usually pretty slow in playing games. If you need that side thing or just something fun and entertaining, a little comical from time to time, I would highly recommend it. Give it a try or even just watch a trailer or something like that. See if it is for you. Um, but yeah, it's been a good time. So just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit here and share.